Natalia Feastfield. Hi. Hello. Hey, Fran. Um, oh, yes. We needed it. We needed it in this space. Thank you for throwing that out. Um, <laughs> I'm so grateful that you are here. Also, this setup is giving me dreams, the little mic in the corner. Anybody who um, is obviously listening on an audio moment, you're not going to notice. But if you go to the YouTube, uh, you will see. It's just it's so profesh. So take take a note. Um, for anybody who doesn't know who you are, who are you today? Oh, I'm just me. Um, I'm I'm Talia oh. Feastfield, uh, actor, voiceover artist, and coach. I am the founder of the Active Style Coaching, um, where I provide free information for the intranets at the act of style coaching on instagram but i also um run a coaching company and i'm just you know living in the world pursuing my dreams just like everybody else's and trying to impart some kind of wisdom along the way um because i think gatekeeping is bullshit and information yeah. should be available so <laughs> yep yeah, we've I've been following you for some time and I just feel like exactly like what you just said, but also you are living and breathing that in that everything that you provide is of a resource and clearly you are using your own advice. Like it's one of those yeah. things that feels very full circle, not performative. And here in this space, you know, that is the type of people, those are the people that I want to be speaking to generally. But yes. um, I really, I really admire that. And I also think you are such a helpful resource for folks in the industry. So thank you for all that you do. Um, I cannot wait for this conversation, however it's going to unfold. I'm curious how you came to coaching, but also a bit more about you as an artist generally. Sure. Um, I kind of came to coaching, uh, I'll say like kicking and screaming a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I went to grad school and, um, and even though, you know, I always knew that going to get an MFA that results in like a terminal degree, you can go teach. Teaching was never a part of my plan. I, I figured yeah. if I was going to teach or coach, it wouldn't be until I was like old and decrepit and just yeah. couldn't actually physically perform anymore. Um, and when I graduated, I, I kind of got caught up um, teaching kids with this really prominent like theater, like young theater group in Los Angeles. And um, I actually kind of fell in love with it. And so I did that for a while. And then when I eventually found my way back to the East Coast, um, I had established um, a bit of a, 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 not a following, but like I'd, I'd established myself as a coach. Yeah. And um, so I, I was juggling with that, and I, but I was mostly teaching and coaching kids. Um, and And I've now watched <laughs> Oh my God. I've watched my kids grow up. Like some of Aww. my little babies that I started coaching when they were like eight years old, they're teenagers now. And I'm like, yes. they're on TikTok and I'm like, what is life? Yeah. 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 <laughs> but, Very much. um, but I, I, I really, this really kind of blew up for me during the pandemic because I had been coaching kids all this time. And then along the way, um, was kind of coaching friends of mine, coaching some adults, um, really kind of, kind of establishing that I was having some trouble figuring out where I fit in and how to bring myself to the roles. And, and I was realizing that there was a need for this. And it all kind of just came together right around the pandemic. Um, when the pandemic hit, uh, and a lot of people were finding themselves, you know, theater was nowhere to be found. Mm -hmm. Um, voiceover was still going on and, and, and film and TV production definitely came back a lot faster when yeah. that started happening, being that I had had a bit of film and TV experience, I was starting to notice a need for on-camera training as well as a lot of people kind of having these awakenings during the pandemic where people were realizing that like 
they didn't really know how to fit in. And as self tapes yeah. became more and more popular and more people were being seen, people were struggling a lot with identity and feelings of their the, the market being too saturated and mm -hmm. not knowing how to how to get in where they fit in. And um, that's kind of where it all began. And, and it, it started with the Instagram page just kind of something to occupy my time, you know, yes. something to help me feel, feel purposeful. And it just grew into a thing. And, and here we are. And I, I love it. Um, I love what I do. I love the connections I've made both with clients and colleagues. And I just, yeah, I love it. Yeah. First of all, I didn't know any of that. So a lot of people don't know because I have a very intense skincare regimen, but I'm <laughs> old y'all. <laughs> I, I same in my mind. I'm like, no, like we're the same age. Clearly, like clearly, we both did our MFAs at the exact same time. Clearly, we. I mean, old eight, old is relative first and foremost. So I'm going to debunk that Facts. as a thing. Facts. Wise is a different conversation. You know, like experience. I'm wise, y'all. Yes, yes. I'm you are. I have been walking the earth longer than most people think. Great, but and let the, them the, keep. The let them keep sitting. guessing. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to want to know the skincare routine because, you know, <laughs> over here on this end of things, we need to keep this fresh. But um, OK, because I didn't know that about your MFA and I'm feeling there's a lot of parallels in terms of myself, too, which is like I didn't coaching kind of fell into the ether by necessity in some capacity. And the love that I have for it was surprising. And mm -hmm. it's a feedback loop also. I would imagine for yourself, like the more you are coaching, the more you are having to be articulate, frankly, with the way in which you are sharing things for a client, for a space, for a room, whatever. It's only going to help you as an artist be more specific for yourself. I know for me, 100%. especially in the pandemic, when it was like, oh, I don't get to do this anymore because my show shut down. And now I'm trying to help you through a screen, try to do that. I'm actually keeping my own craft alive and vibrant. Um, yep, 100%. I imagine that's something. Yeah. Um, how cool. Whether it's tech stuff, right? Like I got it. I try things out before I let people know. Um, mm -hmm. And then, you know, if I let people know and then I start noticing, mm, I feel like this can be done better, right? Um, even yeah. with acting, as I'm coaching people for auditions and stuff, it's like always. I, I I'm reminding myself of like the foundation and and the basics and so it's made yeah it's made me a a much better performer and auditioner um over the past couple of years. Oh, I love that so much. You mentioned something as you were speaking about artists either questioning or finding it difficult to bring themselves to the craft, to the world, to the space, to the, to the thing, whatever that is. And I'd love to unpack that with you because I've certainly found that while I coach too, I find that with myself when I encounter certain roles that make me have to like go out of myself a bit and then I forget like, no, 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 the whole point is that they want you to do the thing, right? I'm curious for you what A, you have found with that concept and B, what has made that something that is, I'd say, like the tenement of the way in which you approach all that you do? Yeah. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm multi-culti. I'm Afro-Latina. My mom's Puerto Rican. My dad is Haitian. Um, I, you know, I've, I've talked about this um, publicly before, but like I, I never felt like I grew up with that kind of quintessential mixed kid childhood mm -hmm. of being like, I don't know where I fit in. To be honest, that shit didn't start happening for me until I was an adult. And I think it's because when I got older, I, I had the awareness of like how the world actually works. When mm. I was a kid just walking around, I didn't know that some people thought I belonged here and some people thought I belonged here. I was just going wherever the hell I wanted to go, right? Yeah. But as an actor in, in my adult life, I was so much more aware 
and therefore always questioning if I was fitting into these boxes that I thought mm -hmm. existed. Um, and, you know, I also came up in the industry when things were a little bit different. Um, you know, there's always, I feel like there's always going to be change that can be made, but we are certainly much better off in the industry um, as far as diversity and representation than we were when yeah. I was getting started. So um, I really was feeling like I was struggling to be what people either expected me to be or mm. wanted me to be, um, you know, measuring up to or trying to fit stereotypes um, that existed. And so I think now in my work, and I'm probably like losing sight of some the actual question you asked. I don't but, care. I don't care. <laughs> no, I really don't. But now in my work, I have such a passion for really instilling in people the idea that we need we need to say fuck it to trying to be what we think casting or production wants oh, man. and instead show them what is available to them through us mm. um yeah. you know i will never be one of those people that's like Casting's dumb. They don't even know what they want. Like casting's not dumb. Production's not mm -hmm. dumb. Your agents aren't dumb. But the fact of the matter is, is that like, sometimes you don't know what you want until you see it. That's a life thing. Yeah. We all know it. We've been dating somebody and then been like, oh God, right? <laughs> right? Like we've all, had yes. to, we've yes. all ordered the steak and then looked over at the other table and thought, damn it, should I have ordered the chicken? We don't mm -hmm. know what we want sometimes until we see it. And so- I have a passion for 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 trying to teach people how to bring themselves to their work because I think that that's going to get you so much further than trying to constantly chase an ideal or trying to fit yourself into a box. Yeah. Um, the way I came about that was really trial and error. It started um, in 2014 when I, when I came up with the act of style coaching, the name actually came from me starting out my business by helping people with their styling, styling for auditions, styling for headshots. Um, because the first area that I noticed this kind of like general approach to type mm -hmm. and branding, which are two words I can't stand. Um, Same. Yep, but like the whole it. idea of like, oh, people say I'm a mom type or I'm a quirky type. And then everybody's mm -hmm. headshots looked exactly the same with the same geeky glasses or like and the mom plaid photos. shirt. And the, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, the mom photos the were like the classic <laughs> plaid shirt or like the little like jewel toned hoodie. And yep. I was like, it would drive me crazy because I'm like, I, I know you like. Yeah yeah, you're quirky, but like, you're not like that kind of quirky. Yeah. And so that's kind of like, that's what broke open this idea for me. And I started trying to help people style themselves in ways that showed their version of whatever the type they were trying to achieve was. And right. eventually this expanded and I gave it a name because I found myself telling people like, no, 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 no. Like, I don't, forget about the type like what's your shade of that type like mm. if you're blue like what shade of blue are you are you tiffany blue are you cobalt blue are you you know sky blue like those are all different vibes like what's your shade and so mm -hmm. i came up with the name archetype shade and eventually over the years i created what i now refer to as the archetype shade method and it's what i use in my branding process i don't even like to use the word branding i like to refer it to refer it as like, what's your identity? What's your industry identity? Mm -hmm. What's your shade? What's your vibe? Um, what are your strengths? Mm -hmm. I prefer those words. Um, and I think, I think there's a lot of confusion and I talk about this a lot on Instagram. There's a lot of confusion about what branding is and isn't. I yeah. think the whole concept of branding freaks people out. Um, but essentially it all, goes back to 
what is essentially the the core, the the cornerstone of my work and my business, which is all about embracing what I call your personal panache. Okay. <laughs> embracing your personal panache, embracing what makes you you and yeah. showing that and making that, you know, bringing that to the forefront of your work. Um, so that, yeah, we're not, we're not, we're not obsessed with like chasing these ideas or these, the only way the industry is going to change as far as representation and, and, um, diversity, uh, is if people begin to embrace all the shit that we've been told is not marketable. Yes, yes, yes. Say it for the people in the back. <laughs> You know but that's I the mean? irony like, of which all of it is because we're talking about like the word branding. I have the same ethos as you, like the type branding. I want to throw this out the window. I recognize that that's like the vernacular that we all are quote unquote approaching it. So we like are speaking around the same things, but it's different. It's different, at least to me and clearly you as well. This idea though of branding is attached to marketing, which is attached to consumerism, which is therefore making us feel like we have to fit into this box so people can sell us. But again, then you're making the little box, the small thing that that's the only thing that could be quote unquote sold rather than like, hey, you go into a store and look at how many things now people can walk out with. Like you're giving more of an ideal option situation than even existed beforehand and one minimizing oneself to fit into what one thinks is the thing is preventing arguably like the the growth of this industry to see the possibility so yes i'm i'm here for this i'm 100 percent stamped too, approved the problem too is that you, and you touched on just this just now, but like, you know, the word branding is so connected to, to consumerism, right? Yeah. That like, we forget if a small business is, is trying to like identify and, and clarify their branding, it's because they have a product that they are trying to sell and they are trying to, um, make whatever that product is stand out in you know whatever competitive market there is right but that's just one product right if you're selling a vacuum you know like you're selling a vacuum as people even if you do think of this as like i'm selling myself i'm a package i'm i'm selling myself to even if you do choose to think of it that way a vacuum vacuums and that's about it a vacuum does whatever the fuck it does people have so many more layers yeah. that like and i think that's part of the big problem is that people ha are have this like consumer mindset when it comes to branding so then when when they try to apply it to themselves they think it's super limiting and that yeah. that branding oneself means finding the one or two things that you are and like going to town with that and I wanted to just break that whole structure apart yeah. because to me, branding should not feel limiting. Branding should, should crack open this whole world yeah. of how you approach all these different types of people and yeah. roles. So you are more than just a mom type and a whatever, like you can play all these different roles but it's about identifying the strengths and the the personality traits in yourself that make you play all those roles yes. this particular way yeah. the way that yeah. you do it yeah you know what it's i mean it's the possibility opening right it's like once you once you open and crack that thing up the possibilities of the way in which you can then show up that's the freeing part you know it's right. like cool let's say there is said mom role how are you said mom? Like there isn't one, like we all know there's not just one kind of mom. Like, let's be clear. Like we all have come from somewhere and someone and every single person is different. Like that's why we are all different. Like I, it's just, it, again, it's a rewiring that I think so many of us from institutions primarily and systems that are very much in place have to like really keep working and drilling and re-undrilling and all of it. But it really is that switch once that thing has been like, oh, 
Right. There's literally no one else yep. on this planet like me. And that's how and it that's- happened for me. Yeah. The switch. It's literally, and when I see it in my clients, it's like I see their faces for everybody watching on YouTube. It's literally like, <laughs> like the switch goes off. And I, there's a story attached to this. The Great. switch went off for me. Um, how long ago was this? I'm guessing like maybe five, six years ago. Okay. The switch really went off for me when I was auditioning for a pilot. Long story short, uh, the show had like four different lead women who were all like sisters. And I was going in for the one who was described as like the type A anal retentive type sister. But there was another character who was like the fun, hot mess sister. And I went to my manager and I was like, why am I not going in for the fun, hot mess sister? Like, <laughs> hello? <laughs> right? <laughs> I was like, I am not anal retentive. I am not type A. And I am very lucky because um, my one of my managers has known me at this point probably for half of my life. Yeah, basically, Amazing. he's known me half my life. Um, and so he very calmly was like, Talia, you are type A. And I was like, no, I'm not. <laughs> like, I don't, even, I don't even know what you're talking about. And he was like, remember the time and then he proceeded to like give a story he's like you did blah 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 and i was like yeah and he was like that's your version of type a he's like Mm. you are very particular about certain things you are particular about this 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 and as he read me for filth i was like Mm -hmm. oh that's my version of typing but because i had this preconceived idea of what type a or anal retentive looked like because of all the stuff i had seen on tv because Mm -hmm. of stereotypes because of what the media says i completely negated all the ways in which that i had these qualities yeah they just were a little bit different in me that crack like what a mind, beautiful, mind honest manager <laughs> that also like he understood the way in which you needed to hear it. Like he was like, yeah. I'm not telling you this because I'm trying to diminish you. I'm trying to tell you this so that you actually embrace what you are so that you can Empowered approach me. this from you. Exactly. The empowerment of it. What a wonderful gift. Hopefully he listens to this and hears that that was where it all started if he doesn't already know. Um, Love you, Harold. Oh, my God. Obsessed. Um, So going from now this idea that clearly we're on the same page about debunking the version, the the way in which we are labeling these things. Once that's on, like the switch has gone, what is a helpful way for someone to look inwards and really start to not – listen to the noise and the distractions to really focus on themselves and embrace all that they are so that they can begin to show up. Yeah. Um, so I would say this is two part answer in two parts. The first is, you know, personally, I use a particular process that I've developed mm-hmm. over years. Um, and it uses what I call the archetype shade method. There's a worksheet involved when I work with my branding clients. Um, it's, I always, warn them at the top, like, this is going to be a very vibey experience. It's some clients tell me it's like one part therapy, one part coaching. Um, I've also been given the nickname, the branding Bruja for, for my non-Spanish speakers. That means the branding witch, because it's like psychic friends network moment. It's very intuitive for me. Um, but we use this worksheet that helps me do that process. And essentially without giving all my tricks away, um, it, it averages out how people see you from three different perspectives. Um, uh, you'll hear a lot of times, some people will say, oh, you're trying to figure out your type, your branding. You got to like go inwards. You got to like figure out yourself, you know, and that's not wrong, but it's only one part of it. And then there's the other you know, sector of people who are like, oh, just go ask people, ask people Mm. what they think of you. And that's not wrong either, but it's just part of it. And what I, what I've said on Instagram, what I say to my clients all the time is that you got to remember the way 
that people view us is consciously and some subconsciously informed by how they see us walking through life, thinking about ourselves. So how we think about ourselves informs those people what they should be perceiving and vice versa. Yeah. The way that we see ourselves and walk through this world is so informed by what we think or or that we do know other people see in us. It's a symbiotic relationship. So you mm -hmm. can't just consider one or the other. You have to average it out. And that's what my process does. Um, but as far as work that that people can do on their own, um, you know, it's gonna sound real cliche um but a real life changing thing for me that i did and i did not do this with the intention of having it apply to my work as an actor and, and my branding so to speak um but a real mind shift and perspective shift for me has been really walking in gratitude um mm -hmm. the more i have found that I can be grateful um, for what I have, for the process, um, for, for my gifts. Um, the more I find I'm able to embrace myself and be comfortable with myself. And that therein is really the biggest and first step to bringing yourself to your work and your, and your quote unquote branding, because you gotta be, you gotta be your mental wellness, your, your comfort as a human is, is so much a part of, of whether or not you're comfortable as an actor and bringing your, yeah. and, you know, bringing all that you are. Um, here's the other thing. We talk a lot about, you know, and I've mentioned the word your strengths. What a lot of people don't realize is sometimes your strengths is the shit that you think is keeping you from the job, is the mm -hmm. shit that you're self-conscious about, whether aesthetically or energetically, you know. And so once you come to terms with that and you're walking through, you know, walking in gratitude and saying, you know, I know there are things that I want. I know there are things that I want for myself or maybe that I want to change in myself, but I am so grateful for where I am right now. I am so grateful I have the opportunity to pursue that. That's the start. That was the starting point. That was the jump off for me because I just, that shifted my perspective. And then I found mm -hmm. that I was really approaching my work with a hell of a lot more fun and enjoyment. Mm. And that, let me tell you, when you lock into that baby, when you <laughs> go into your auditions with no fucks other than to just do it, mm -hmm. when I tell you I have not felt nervous, whether doing a self tape or in person, I have, I cannot tell you the last time I was really nervous and that my friends, that shit is the most free, most empowering thing. Because again, you have to get to that level in order to feel comfortable just bringing yourself. Yeah. The whole reason, let me tell you the number one thing that stops people from bringing their, themselves to the role themselves. <laughs> Yeah, no, but it's true. Being self-conscious, feeling that what they what they've got ain't enough, feeling like they got to do what someone else thinks. All of that mm -hmm. is lack of self-trust, lack yep. of confidence. And so for me personally, it began it began in a very small way and that was starting with gratitude. Mm -hmm. That was Oof. huge. Huge for me. Oof. There's so much in here that are just like little nuggets of gems just because it's like even if you take just the gratitude part, that in of itself is a is a world shift in the way in which you move. Even if it's just the beginning to focus on the self-trust part of things, that also is like a small little beginning of a world shift, right? These small little things. We don't – again, it, I don't think – 
there's any suggestion that this happens overnight. But even just being aware that this is something that you want to begin to incorporate is in and of itself a world shift. Um, that self-trust part is one that I find with arguably most of my clients and myself too. You know, it's just the thing that I have to – that we have to keep reminding ourselves that all we really have is ourselves on the, in this I life journey. I got no story time for that. I got yes. no story time for that. Oh, yes, please. Um, and this is very recent. So y'all know I am, I am still working on this stuff on myself as we yeah. speak. Um, just a couple weeks ago, had a pilot audition. Um, and I'm going to try not to say anything I'm not supposed to say. I had a pilot audition. Um, the breakdown was whatever the breakdown was. And the age range wasn't my age range. Um, the, 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 the genre was a type of genre I, that I think I can say the genre was like a, like a medical TV show. So, you know, there's, there's a, there's a feeling and like a pacing and, and like an assumed style. Right. Yeah. I took all of that and I don't know what it was, but my instincts and my voice in my head was like, Oh no, 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 we're going to do it this way. Mm -hmm. And I played it so different than I think Talia would have played it three years ago. Mm. I got a call from the vice president of the network. Well, my, my managers did. And she called and she was like, that was so different. I loved wow. it. I sent it to network. My manager called me, told me about the feedback from, from the casting director. And also told me there were other clients who auditioned and I, mine was completely different. And my manager even said, she goes, I was a little worried that like you went a little off. She's like, I liked it though. She's like, we sent mm -hmm. it ahead because it was good work. That was the most important thing. Even yeah. my manager was like, I was nervous that, that, that because everybody else was doing it this way that you're, she was like, but the work was great. Mm -hmm. And the reason mm -hmm. the work was fucking great, Jennifer, was because I was doing me. Yes. Yes. Because yes. I but was also connected. now at the end of the night, you could go to sleep knowing that you did that. I think there's also like that's even more right when we do these auditions that who knows how the, the control part of this industry leaves our hands once we send that thing out. Mm -hmm. But you at least get to go to sleep at night knowing like I did what I wanted to do with that. What I would Killed bring to this shit. role where I work, where I cast. Yeah. Yes. Um, and I can be but, happy with my work. And that is where that is where I'm at right now and where I want everybody to be. Yeah. To get to the point where you're auditioning, you're either sending in your self-tapes or you're going through the audition process in person. And that no matter what happens, at the end of the day, if you don't get it, you're sitting there like, no, there but I did that. Yeah. I did that. <laughs> I yeah. killed that. Yeah. You yeah. know, and and, yeah. and if I'm being honest, somewhere out, someone out there is going to be like, mm, that's all your girl. She got an ego, but I don't care. I kill everything I do. I love every, everything, mm -hmm. every audition I've put out in the past two weeks. I killed that. I feel but so also, good like, about it. The ego part is another, I mean, I'm not a therapist, but that is just somebody projecting an insecurity from themselves onto you. If I may be so bold in Sorry, that, like, boo. they see. Yeah, they don't, but except not sorry, because they see something in you that frankly, they're probably envious of within them, um, themselves, that they wish that they were cultivating more in themselves, right? I think there's a healthy balance of recognizing one's self-worth, which is frankly inherent, you're a human being, you, it, like, that's it. But like recognizing and owning one's self-worth, taking up the space that you need when you are doing the things that you are asked to do, and then leaving it being like, I did that because that's who yeah. I am and what I bring to it. You know, I don't think well, that's ego. Well, how are you going to expect somebody to, to love your work? How are you going to expect somebody to love your work and love what you do and bring you in if you don't love the work? If you're not walking away- there we go saying I killed that shit. How are you going to expect somebody else to watch it and go, Ooh, she killed that. Yeah. You know what yep. I mean? You gotta be proud. You gotta be proud of what you do. And this is where it comes full circle. The only way you are going to be able to just lay it out there, not give a damn about whether or not it's right or wrong, but just do what you do and do it. Well, the only way you're going to be able to do that is if you spend the time to like, get right with self, walk in some gratitude, 
be grateful for the process, have fun and like shut out all the, all the noise. Um, and worry about what's actually important. Yeah. Doing good work. Yeah. I call it the bullshit barometer when people are like, well, how do I like get good at like watching myself? I only see my nose looks big from this angle. It's like, okay, well, first of all, here we are. First like, of all, I work in television all the time and I for, I got a big nose. Look, look at that. Girl, I'm turning too. If I, I did. A big nose. The, same here. We love her. Same. same. We love her. Took, took a long time, but that's she's on my face and she is there and she's not going anywhere. You know, but like if we're focusing on these things that we have no control over, you know, it's like you're not looking at the bullshit of yourself from on a camera, which, you know, in the self tape land, which is going to be sticking around, like that is the thing that you can see. That's why I love, I used to back in my prior life, I was a headshot photographer. That was my side hustle. I know. And then I hated editing. I hated the editing and I gave it up. I mean, I'm still a photographer, I guess, but, um, we all have many seasons of our lives. And one of the things I loved about doing it was because I got to truly see a human being through my lens. There isn't, the camera does not lie for better or for worse. And just learning how to see yourself in a way that's like, is this, is my bullshit showing up? Am I getting in my own way or am I seeing myself having fun? Am I seeing myself bringing something that feels exciting? Am I feeling myself through this camera, enjoying myself? Like, you know yourself when you're having fun and when you're not, you know yourself when you're like being an asshole and when you're not like, you know that. And so if you can, you know, cultivate the watching of yourself through that lens of like, yeah, this is me. I don't know whether the choice is right. Honestly, don't care because I made the choice and look how much I'm sticking with it. Then that work is good and truthful and honest, which is like, that's what we're aiming for. Like your version of truth and honesty that you bring off the page. Um, Again, we're not saying, I mean, I'm like, I'm not, I know both of us are not saying this is an easy situation and that it's easier said than done and it's a lifelong practice. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> this is not easy, but, but, no. you know, I guess really the, 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 the point is that there are so many people out there who get frustrated so quickly yeah. and you got to remember, you know, the whole idea, this is a marathon, not a sprint. Mm-hmm. The, the shit's not going to happen overnight. And, and that applies to every aspect of this industry. So you signed with an agent. Congratulations. Applause, applause. Well, guess what? It's going to take a couple months for that relationship to lock in. So you got new headshots. Amazing. You just because you got new headshots doesn't mean all of a sudden overnight, the auditions you receive are going to, are going to change. Right. And I think people, especially because we live in a world of instant gratification with social media and, and iPhones and, you know, technology, um, it's, that's bled into our work a bit. Um, that people want, they think, oh, I went to class yesterday. So tomorrow I should be booking a pilot. And it's like, no, y'all got to have patience with the process and patience with yourself. Like we, you know, if, if, if this isn't proof, I don't know what is, but like during the pandemic, we saw just how over the course of a year, people's whole psyches and mindsets could change. But then again, we also know that like sometimes things take a while to grow and and it takes life experience and and you know going in and out of relationships to like evolve as humans. I remember when I graduated from grad school um, out of showcase, I had a meeting with this agent and, or a manager, I had a meeting with a manager and I really wanted to sign with him. I knew people who were with him. He was a really small, it was a small company and I liked his energy and he looked me dead in the face and he was like, I really like you, Talia. I would love to sign you, but I can't sign you right now. And I was like, why? Mm -hmm. (laughs) And he goes, Mm -hmm. he was like, because honestly, uh, I, I think that at the time I was like 25, 26, he's like, you're not going to start working till you hit your thirties. And I, I straight up sat across from this man, fresh out of grad school, 26 years old, looked him dead in the eye and was like, fuck you, Bruce. Yes, you. <laughs> and he did. was like, he was like, I'm sorry. He's like, but 
you know, you look really young, which I knew, but he was like, but the, you're gonna have to, he's like, you're one of those people that life is gonna shape you. He's like, you're not going to get this until you get it. You're not going to get this until one day you're going to wake up and you're going to remember this conversation. And God damn it, Bruce, he was right. Yeah, He was right. I did not start really working in TV until I was in my 30s. Mm -hmm. And, and it, looking back on it, it was like, <laughs> of course not. Like all the shit, all the stuff, all the life. I needed to take the time to go yeah. through that. But then again, yeah. like I just said, or a pandemic hits and in, and within a year, everybody's lives change and everybody's perspective change. So you never know, but the whole, yeah. the whole point is you gotta have patience and you gotta just be down for the, the damn ride. You just gotta yeah. be down for the ride. Yeah. And you got to be willing to float sometimes. There's an analogy that I like to use with my clients. You know why people drown in the ocean? It's not mm -hmm. the waves. It's not the waves. It's not the, it's not sharks. It's because they are paddling so hard that they tire themselves out and then they drown. But if you were to stop paddling so hard, Mm -hmm. Stop working so hard, right? And trust and roll over on your back and float. You know what's yeah. going to happen? The tide is going to gently, it'll bring you out, but then it'll bring you back to closer to the shore. And then maybe you'll, you'll go back out to sea a little bit, but you'll end up at the shore. And eventually you're going to end up at the shore in front of the little treasure chest you were looking for. And it may have taken you longer to get there by floating, but at least you didn't wear yourself out and at least yeah. you didn't drown. And even if you had paddle, 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 paddled and gotten there faster, well, now you don't have any energy to play with all the treasure on the shore, right? Yeah. Now you're tired, now you're bitter, now you're worn out. So try floating. Yeah. <laughs> it's wild that you bring that up, not to like throw in a, you know, a traumatic story into this space, but that actually did happen to me where I almost drowned um, off the coast of um, California. Um, and oh my, my mother God. and I got caught in a riptide. And that exact same thing happened where it's a fight or flight mode. And the reason I'm bringing this up is just to like tag on, like it actually in real life. It's like, so true fight or though, flight. fight or flight. It really is. Yeah, fight or flight happened in real time. I'm drowning. I can't find a, where the, where is the exit? Where is the air? Where can I get? I don't know. I'm spinning. I'm spinning out. I literally have no control over this. And I all I know is that I'm going, if I keep running out of air, I'm going to die. And how can I make myself not die? And the amount of tumbling and tumbling this lasted for who even knows how long, multiple waves, multiple times to the point that it was like, I'm, this is it. And I was exhausted and I was fighting and flighting until I floated up. And there was literally in that moment, a light bulb moment of, oh, right, we float. Like we, that is literally how this works when you learn how to swim, which I did when I was a child. And now I'm however many years later and this is happening to me. And yet my instinct was to, to like, push and and struggle my way to to the air rather than yeah trusting that like that's just how it works <laughs> like you see and like you ever see those videos of them throwing newborn babies into the water oh yeah that's and then they moment. just like mm -hmm. bloop and they float you know you know why they're able to do that because they don't know they don't think, sense and they the don't danger. think their way out yeah they they're don't not their way out of it exactly yeah it's like a, and that and, and as I drifted, me and my mother, same type of dynamic happened as we drifted to shore and my younger sister was like, what happened to you? We were like, we, we're not going to be speaking for a while until we can breathe again. But, you know, like there was that in that drifting moment was recalibrating all the things you think you know, which is I think I can think my way out of this or I think I know more about this than what is actually happening, which is nature and the way that things work, you know, and it's it really is that again, not easy, but like that trust that like, first of all, your body knows more than you know. Your body knows more. It really does. And trusting that your body knows how to breathe on its own. You're sleeping however many hours a night. Your body's arguably like shut off and your body still knows how to keep you alive. Like you're not telling your body to do it. It's doing it. You know, like going back to the foundation of like what is here, what is truthful is this 
corporal being that is placed here. And then we've been taught and told all these things that have filled our gorgeous, beautiful minds that sometimes is really wonderful and helpful. And sometimes it's deterring from like what your body actually knows and exists and is here to do. Um, I just, yeah, I think uh, you're touching on so many things that I feel like are just like <laughs> speaking to parts of my heart and the way in which I try to approach artistry and also with my clients too. And it's just it just feels really nice to be in a space with somebody who I'm like, oh my God, we're speaking the Yay. same language. As we begin to wind down our time, I'm curious if there's anything that you wish you had. Obviously, there's so many lessons and stories that you've so vulnerably shared in this space already, but something that maybe you wish you knew earlier that either you wish you were taught from someone else or that like you wish that you didn't have to have the life experience <laughs> to have to learn mm. it the hard way. Oh God, there's, there's probably so much. <laughs> Always. Yeah. Um, I can think of a few things. One is when I was an undergrad, one of my mentors, I'll mention his name. His name's Eric Hill. He was a tough, he was a tough guy, tough love. Um, and he was tough on me. Uh, but I was also kind of an asshole. So um, he, I would like, you know, there would be some times where like, I knew I was, I knew, I knew I was good. I knew I was like doing well. So sometimes like I would just do the bare minimum. Mm. Um, but I remember there's one time he called me out on it because one day we had done something and it was really crappy and he was really hard on me in class. And then like the next day I brought in something that was, that I had worked on. And he looked at me and in front of the class was like, Talia, when you actually do the work, you're phenomenal. And he goes, when you don't, it's shit. <laughs> and yes. I, my jaw hit the floor and he was like, you're good. But on the outside, there are people who are great and, mm -hmm. and they're not great at their base level, they're great because they're where he's like, there's always going to be somebody working. And if you're mm -hmm. just kind of like not working, settling on being good, there's always going to be somebody who is not settling for just okay and good. They're going to be working and being excellent. Mm -hmm. Um, that really rocked me. Um, yeah. and, and it's something I, it's something I still to this day, you know, I have to check myself. Like I have to remind myself like, yes, that's, if you do it that way, it'll be good. It'll be mm -hmm. fine. But like, do we really want to be good? Mm. Like, no, I want to be fucking great. I want to be excellent. Yeah. I want- For um, you, not for anybody else. Like, I think that's exactly, the thing to remember. It's exactly. for you. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I, yeah, yeah. That's, that's definitely the next step is that then also I wish I knew sooner that I was enough. What do you mean by that for you? Because I know, I mean, that's something that is thrown around a lot. I know I say, it, you know, like, what does that mean for you? That being a curly headed, blue eyed, light skinned, multi culty weirdo who sometimes had a raging temper but most of the time was just odd, who liked to wear whatever the hell she wanted, no matter what style it was, that all of that was fine, was great, was, was perfect. <laughs> because, you know, I spent so much time, different periods of my life, like if we went through my photo album, right? Like there was the straightening the hair era because I didn't think my my curls were good or, you know. Which by the way, they are, I have total curl envy. I have total curl envy. Thank you. It took, let me girl. tell you, it took mm -hmm. work and years and we love, we love her. To this day, you, you, I don't, I don't blow out my hair very often. Mm -hmm. um, part of like the embracing and loving what I am, mm -hmm. but just like, you know, wearing whatever the fuck I want to wear because I feel like wearing it and knowing that that's okay. And like, yeah, I wish I knew sooner that a lot of what I thought I had to do was what other people 
were saying, what yeah. other people's expectations of me were, and that that's crap. I I look back now, like I look at like the kids. <laughs> I look at the kids these days. I look at, you know, the way TV is shaping up and I see shows like, oh, so many shows like Euphoria and Sex Education and like just, and I see such unique, like rad people who are like so authentically themselves. Oh, I just fell in love with this show sort of on HBO with this yeah. um, non-binary protagonist. And I'm like, I wish we had that. I wish we had that when I was younger. Um, Cause I definitely would have approached my work and my entire career differently. And I think if I were to say anything to the people out there now, like hustling, especially the younger folks, like y'all don't know how good you got it. I, that, that, now I really sound, now I really do sound old, No, no <laughs> but, no. but appreciate, I, I really want y'all to look out into, into the entertainment industry and really look at what you see. Yes, there's always room for improvement, but, but what I really want people to recognize is like people are out there bringing themselves, their uniqueness, their, their individuality, their style, like the whole reason, you know, and it's frustrating for us as artists, but the whole reason people are getting famous off of TikTok and Instagram is because they're not getting caught up in the like, well, I'm, I'm at a loss for words. And it, they're like not getting caught up in the yeah, the structure mm -hmm. that like actors get yeah. stuck in. They're just doing their little TikTok dance and doing their little makeup and showing their personality and talking the way they talk and dressing the way they dress, right? And as actors, if we can learn to embrace that, man, we're unstoppable because I think, you know, I'm, I come, I come from a background of like, you do need training. You need, you do need to know how to do this. Uh, of course, there are always except exceptions. There are always going to be actors who, who kind of just appear or who have natural talent, but for the, for the majority of us, if you can take that training, if you can take that skill, right, that's necessary, but then you can also marry that with like the ability to just be and like bring all, all your shit, the good shit, the bad shit, the in-between, bring all your shit. That, that's, that's superpower right there. That's superpower level. That's what I'm working towards every day. And, and, and I feel like, you know, as I, as I go through my journey, I feel like I'm getting closer and closer to that. The more I, I, I audition and feel like I have fewer fucks, the better <laughs> I feel as an actor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. It's something I'm working towards as well. And I think, you know, it's like you can approach every audition or workspace with like one single intention and perhaps the next one that you have, you approach it with, let's see how little fucks I can give for this one and just try it and see what happens as just an offering. It's really the balance of instinct and technique. Yeah. That's yeah. that, that's that, that's, I feel like that's like yeah. the number one actor conundrum. How do you balance yeah. instinct with what you've been taught with your, with technique, yeah. with all the, you know, yeah. um, and that's, that's the constant, that's the constant yeah. battle. Yep. Um, for anybody who wants to work with you or wants to follow your unbelievable wisdom, your fun, your banter, your insights, where is best within your boundaries for people to connect with you? Um, you can definitely go get all that free, free wisdom mm -hmm. on, um, at the act of style coaching on Instagram. Um, we also got TikTok, but I don't have the bandwidth to keep up with TikTok. <laughs> so just follow me on Instagram. Um, and then, uh, if you want to actually work with me, you can go to my website, the act of style coaching.com. All of my services are listed there and um, you can reach me through the contact page on my website. Amazing. I absolutely adore you. 
I think you are the coolest. The love is mutual, friend. Yeah. This was great. I am just, I'm such a fan of yours. And um, to have this time to just spend and talk to you even more deeply than like what we see, um, I just, I feel so grateful. And thank you for trusting us in this space and for continuously showing up so honestly. Um, it really is a rarity. And um, I know I've already learned so much and I imagine others have and will continue to do so. Um, so thank you for being here. Thank you for all that you do. And let this just be like the beginning because I want to like keep being your friend. Oh, we're friends now. So <laughs> right. Right. That's all I was asking for. We're gonna, we gotta to hang up. You're gonna hang up this podcast and continue to keep me. Sorry, Great. y'all. You can't hear it all. <laughs> Bye. Me. Bye.